studies well. Determining where, if you're going to ha be uh, having you uh, find out what our current speed is, which it sounds like you would have speed to be able to do that, let me ask you this. In determining where you're actually going to instantiate uh, the uh, speed yeah. class, yeah. to be able to set your speed and then your track what the speed settings are, let me ask you this. Do you want it to forget what speed it's going to set to? Every time you have to it, it's like science. <laughs> 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 I 
Yeah, well, right now I'm not actually able to be available on Thursday. I may be out of town that day, but uh, Friday I check my schedule, and if you don't see anything available, I just uh, should be in text. I, the only time I absolutely can't uh, open up an appointment time slot is uh, around 2.30 to 4.30 time I've got a meeting, and then some classes a little bit you know, Available to you guys right now. Let me know when I can let you know. In fact, maybe we should uh, check into that right now. So, uh, yeah, you have two decisions of the Hi. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. Sorry, uh, I got it all mixed up with the computer stuff. Yeah, that's okay. okay. So, uh, you're going. We are going to make up week four JHA number one. I think it's week five. Week five. Because we're in week six right now, right? Oh. Okay. Unless I got that wrong. Oh, it looks like right now. Yeah, today's uh, week six. I do still have a three fifteen. So no, wait, yeah. Let me just check what grade you have last week to make sure. So let's see. Yeah, you have a zero for week five. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's the one I can make up. Awesome. I was not feeling good. Yeah. <laughs> Let me pull out then week five. Okay. And did you have a surgery? Yes, I did. I had to get my appendix out last week. Wow. Yeah. How how did it go? Uh, it went good. Um. Yeah, I just I wasn't feeling good Wednesday, and I went into the hospital here in Rexburg, and then uh, they told me I, it was uh, appendicitis, and they had to do surgery. So uh, they did, and I was out home by like 9 o'clock that night. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't really get out of bed until yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Are you fe feeling better now? For the most part, yeah, just a little sore. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> I've never yeah. had surgery, so... I'm not sure how it is like. It <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want to start with a prayer? Sure, that'd be great. Okay. Do you want me to say it or you want to say it? Uh, sure, yeah, if you want to say it. Okay. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are very grateful for this day and that we have the opportunity to study. And please bless this meeting so we both can learn something. And bless... Uh, Amon, so he feels better. And we sell with the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so I had a couple questions about makeup work. Mm -hmm. If you can answer them. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so today we can make up uh, the first meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, is there a quiz that I need to make up that day? Let me see. So so usually uh, in the week you have two um, uh, two meetings, okay. and during the second meeting you meeting you have quiz, but during okay. the first one you don't have. So did you miss the the second one last week too? Yeah, I was I was gone that whole week. Okay, 
then then we could make we could make up um, the whole week five, and then we would need to do a quiz together. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, you have zero there too. Yeah. So let's do that. Okay, I'll screen share. Um, and let's start doing um, the first meeting. So the question is, have you have you done anything here? Um, I worked at the preparation stuff, but I haven't done the extension problems. Okay. Do you have any questions from preparation stuff? Um, it wasn't too bad. Uh, it just took me a long time. Um, yeah. Math is not my strong suit. Mm -hmm. So. so so do you want to start doing the first one? Let's, let's start doing that one. Sure. Oh, um, another question. I think, was there an exam last week? Um, I think so. I'm not sure though. I'm not like responsible for, for the exams. I'm just for oh, okay. group stuff, so. Okay, no worries. I'm not sure. Yeah, but you should ask about, about it, Sister Blackham. Okay, sure. Okay. So, do you know how to find um, how to make this equation in vertex form? Uh, that's when you put it in parentheses, right? Yep. You're, when you're trying to find the complete square. Right. Okay. Um, I think so. So, um, if you want. Um, If you want, we can do it together. Yeah, let's do that together. Okay. I'll just do paint. Paint here. So we have y equals to 3x squared minus 12x plus 1. OK, so what do, what is the first thing you need to do? Um, I think. I would pull 3x out of the first part and put it in parentheses, right? Yeah, you would only need to pull out 3. Only 3? Yeah, because you essentially need to make a complete square out of this stuff. OK, so then it would be 3 parentheses x squared minus 4x parentheses plus 1. Yes, exactly. OK. OK. Do you see my screen? Yes, I, I'm looking at it. OK, awesome. Now, um, we have to add something to, to this one um, to make a complete square. So what should we add? Um. Would it be, wait, let's see. Would it be positive four? Yeah, it would be positive four. So, the easy way to find like this kind of stuff is you say you take this one and divide it by two and we'll get two here and then we square it so th this is our full squ full square but now we need to figure out what we added here so you just open it with this formula so a squared is just x squared and you put minus because this is like that here. If the, and then 2 times a, which is in our case x, b in our case 2. This is b. And plus b squared, which is 2 squared, which is 4. And so we get x squared minus 4x plus 4. OK. I don't know if, you, if I confused you, but we no, found no, no, awesome so we found like the the term that we need to add to make full square 
Okay. And then we continue plus one. Nothing changes here. But since we added four here, we need to subtract the thing that we added. And the thing is that here's three in the front. So we actually would need to multiply it. three times four, it would be 12. So we actually add 12 here. So we need to subtract 12 here. Okay. Do you understand this part, what we are subtracting? I think so. Okay. Let, let's do it in a little bit other way because this is a little confusing. Let's let's pull out three from from the whole equation. So it would be x squared minus four x, and then it would be plus one third, right? Okay. Now let's now let's add uh, like we did uh, four to make a full square minus four x, and then plus four. But now we need to subtract four because we are adding four. Okay. Okay. This one more understandable. Now we have y equals to three. Now we make a com complete square from this thing, and we know that it's x minus two. Do you understand how to go to this form from these numbers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. And then we are left with minus four plus one third. And let's add these numbers. So here would be y equals three, x minus two squared. And then here we have minus 12 plus one minus 11 third over three. Correct? Okay. Now we want to open these parentheses, get rid of this parentheses. So we distribute, we times three this part, and then we times three this part. So it would be three times x minus two squared minus 11. So this is our vertex form. Okay, okay. Yeah, so you could do this this way, because then you know for sure that you didn't mess up. Or here, like we did here, we just we just open like we time this by three, four times three, twelve. Then we subtract twelve, and then we we get the same the same answer. Okay. But yeah, if if this one is more understandable, then do this way. So this is our vertex form. And now, what is the vertex then? Um, the vertex is going to be that, uh, like, HK, mm -hmm. which is, like, uh, B, and then, yeah, like, positive, like, a, so it would be positive 2, and then I think negative 11? Yes, exactly. Because uh, our vertex form is like that, uh, something A here, and then X minus H. And squared minus actually plus um, h k plus k. Since here is minus, we leave minus here. But here is minus, and here is minus. So h is two, right? Okay. Yeah. But if here was plus two, then h would be minus two. So it's the opposite of sine of whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, this one we figured. Now let's go to see. Find the vertex axis of symmetry. So do you know how to find the axis of symmetry? What what does it mean? Um that's finding like the it's not the y and x intercepts, is it? I did it. Let me see. I was working on it before. Is that the negative B over 2A thing? Uh, this is actually the other way to find uh, vertex. 
to not do all of this. Uh -huh. Actually, it's very, very good thing that you remember that. So x vertex equals to minus b over 2a. And let's check if it works. So in our case, b is minus 12, correct? So we have minus 12 on top. And we have 2 times a. a in our case is 3. Right, this is a, this is b, this is c. And now we have 2 times 3, it would be 6. So it would be 2. You see, this is what we found here. There was minus sign here. Wait, why did, why did the minus disappear? Uh, because remember, I, <laughs> I, I showed you, like, if, if here was plus, then we would oh, put here okay. minus. But actually, our equation was like that. And now to find y vertex, you would just we would just substitute x value into equation. So we have three, two squared, minus twelve, times two, plus one. So this is twelve, minus twenty four, plus one. Twenty four minus twelve. It's minus twelve, minus eleven. So, 2 and minus 11. You see, the same. But we didn't need to do all of this. Thing. Oh, OK. So I actually prefer this thing better. But whatever. So um, symmetry of uh, what is the axis of symmetry? It means that they want us to find out if it is an odd symmetry or even symmetry. OK. So. Um, do you remember what odd symmetry means? Here, yeah. odd. Actually, let me. It's which way? Um, no, that's not. Let, let, let's try. Let's try with the even one. It's it's here, okay. even. So even means that uh, the graph is symmetric over the y-axis. So this part reflects uh, the parts on the other side. And the formula for that to figure out, like usually it's f of x should equal to f of minus x. This is the formula figuring out if it's even function. Okay. And this is actually our f of x thing. Now let's try, and, let's try to find f of minus x. So it means that we need to substitute instead of x, minus x. And so what we will get? Sorry, I'm still writing this down. OK, yeah. OK, so f of negative x. So that flips all the signs, right? That it's so you just substitute instead of x, negative x. So you have 3 times negative x squared. See, here was x. You just substituted with it. negative 1. Negative 12, negative x plus 1. And we will get 3x squared plus 12x. Negative 12 times negative x is just 12x plus 1. OK. OK. Now. We see if this equation f of x equals to f of minus x, if this this equation equals to this equation, and we see that here is plus and here is minus, meaning that they don't equal each other. Okay. Me meaning that it's not even function. It's not the axis of symmetry is not y. Um. Now let's figure out what odd. Uh, odd function means means that uh, so here we have one half of the graph it should be first reflected over x-axis and then reflected over y-axis so it should be something like that okay. okay now to figure out the formula for that is minus f of x equals to f of Minus x. 
Okay. We have f of minus x. It's here. Now try to figure out minus f of x. So you just need to put here in front minus sign and then open the parentheses. Okay, and so what we'll get? Okay, so that makes the whole function negative? Yes. We just need to put negative sign in front of our function, and this is our function. So when we put negative sign, it would be negative 3x squared. Negative times negative is just positive. And then negative times positive, negative. Do you understand this part? Well, then it would be negative 3x squared plus 12x minus 1? Yes, exactly. Okay. Now, we look at this at, at this, uh, what we got, and then we see our f of minus x function, and see if they equal each other, and we see obviously no, because here is minus, here is plus, there is plus, here is minus. Right. So this function is also not odd. And so we could say that this function is neither odd or nor even, and we can say that there is no axis of symmetry. Okay. And then, and then when we draw this graph, it would be something. It means that it would be something like, like that. So there is no axis of symmetry. Okay. Got it. Now let's move on. Find x and y intercepts. Okay. I'll erase this part. So let's find the x intercepts. Uh, let's find, yeah. And this is where you substitute 0 in for x or y, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. So let's find x intercepts first. The easy way to remember is that x intercepts, you need y equal to 0. And then okay. y intercepts, you need x equals to 0. So you always remember that it should be something positive here y intercepts x equal to 0, x intercepts y equal to 0. So let's do that. y equals to 0, meaning that we have 0 equals to 3x squared minus 12x plus 1. And actually, we've got, we've got this form, which is better to use in this case. Let's use this form. 3x minus 2 squared minus 11 equals to 0. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Okay, so what we'll get next. We'll add 11 from both sides, right? Right. Now it's next. So then 3 parentheses x minus 2 parentheses squared equals 11? Mm -hmm, yep. Okay, so then we divide both sides by 3? Yes, exactly. Okay. Now, what's next? Um, square both sides? Exactly. And then we'll get x minus 2 equals to what? Uh, square root of 11 over 3. Yeah, but don't forget that every time when you're squaring, uh, taking square root of a number, it should be plus or minus. Plus or minus, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then next. Add 2 to both sides. Yes. So you can write down it as a point. What will, will we get? as a point? Um, 2 plus or minus square root of 11 over 3? So, yeah, so the first the first point would be 2 plus ele square root of 11 over 3. Oh, and, and zero. zero. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then the second one is? Oh. 
uh, a minus instead. Mm -hmm. Yep, correct. Okay. Now let's find the y intercept. And <laughs> tell me if I need to slow down or something like that. Oh, no, yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay. So with y, we just plug in zero for x. Mm -hmm. We can start with the uh, three. X minus two squared minus eleven. Uh, in this case, it's better to substitute in this in this the formula. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So what we'll get for y value? I think it's just one, right? Exactly, because zero times anything is just zero. And so our point is. Um, it'll be z um, zero, one. Yes, exactly, because we said x to zero. This is an x value, and y, we found that it's okay. y, one. Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. OK, this one we found. And now let's graph the function. Mm. OK. So the first thing that we need to do is to plot the um, x and y intercepts that we found and and uh, find the vertex let's actually find the ver vertex for first the point of the vertex so it would be two negative 11. This is when it's nice to have graph paper. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, so two negative eleven is the vertex. Mm -hmm. And now we have to find the approximate number of these things to plot them. So let's calculate in the calculator. Um, eleven over three, square root of it. And then plus two. What do you get for two plus square root of 11 over three? Oops, I put in an extra number. Uh, 3.9? Yes, exactly. That's what I got. So about four. And that's the x intercept? Yes, this one represents x value, the first number, and then this one is represents y value. So let's find it on the graph. One, two, three, four. So somewhere over here. And y is zero, so it stays in this one. Um, now let's find how much approximately the second point is. So we have 11 over three. The square root minus two. And tell me how much do you get? For the two minus? Yes, yes. Uh, <clears throat> for the two minus square root of 11 over three? Yes, yes. Uh, 0 0.085. 0.85? Yeah, 0 0.085. OK, let me check if I did something wrong. Oh, I'm getting 0 0.62 kind of thing. So this is the 2 minus square root of? 11 over 3. Yeah, it's giving me 0 0.085. OK. Let's see. OK, yes, you are correct. Awesome. So it's somewhere, it's less than one, somewhere over here. OK. Now, 
now we see that here's no minus sign and here's x squared meaning that it's a parabola with um, like uh, <laughs> it's not an upside down parabola it's like that correct so we can actually draw it goes like that and like that something like this yes but it it never crosses uh, cross out the uh, y um, y axis it just infinitely well it it, it crosses out but very far away okay gotcha okay now also identify the domain range let's let's figure that out screen share so what is the domain that's all of the x right yes yes And so what is the domain? So negative infinity, right, on one yeah. side. But then it stops at 2? Uh, no, so domain is like all axes. Huh. So you see this. So you trying to see the um, the x-axis, and you see that anywhere you are putting the, for instance here, somewhere far away, far away, there will be y value. Somewhere far away, there will be y value. Then here, because it 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 grows like that infinitely, infinitely to that side. Okay. And infinitely to this side. Oh, is it negative infinity, infinity? Yes, exactly. And in range, you look f f you look for y axis. That would be everything above negative eleven, right? Exactly. So negative eleven, and then plus infinity. Okay. Okay. Now, um, so do you know how to solve this equation? X with this third power and things like that. Um, I think I could. It would probably take me a little bit, but well, well, yeah. Okay. So, do you want to uh, do screen share? Um, actually, we have a lot to cover. So, let's just let's just think the problems that you will probably have problem with. Yeah. Okay. So what about this one? Do you think you will have problem with this one? Number two or number three? Number one. Uh, yeah, solve the following equations. Oh, um, out of those, probably the only one is the last one with the where we get the square root. Yeah, let's do that. So plus 10 minus x minus 2 equals to 2. OK. I'll do this screen share then. Here, so we have square root of x plus 10 minus x minus 2, and it all equals to 2. Okay, so we could either uh, raise to the second power both sides, either we could move this one to this side, this thing to this side, and right. I would re recommend to do this because. It will be easier at the end, but both ways would work. Yeah, let's just move it. So it would be two plus x minus two under the root square. Okay. And do you square both sides? Now that yeah, and now we are raising to the second power both sides. And so what will we get? So then we'll have x plus 10 equals 4 plus x minus 2. 
So this you need to FOIL. This is the same as 2 plus x minus 2 times the same thing, 2 plus oh. x minus 2. So you would need to distribute it. Or you could use the same formula I showed you before, a plus b squared equals to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Let's use this formula because it's easier. Okay. So we have a squared, which is a in our case is 2. So 2 squared is 4 plus 2ab, meaning 2 times a. A is 2, correct? Yeah. So then 2 squared plus 2 times 2 times, uh, and the square root of x minus 2 is b? Yes, yes exactly. And then? Um, plus square root of x minus 2 squared. Yes. And square root, square root of, uh, and raised to the second power, it will give us just x minus 2, right? Right. OK, awesome. Now let's simplify it a little bit. So this one will go away, because x then minus x is just 0, correct? Yeah. Hold on. Sorry. Let me yeah, yeah. That. Take your time. So the x's cancel out? Mm -hmm. So then we have 10 equals 4 plus 4 times square root of x minus 2 and minus 2. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And uh, do you understand why the x's go, goes away? Go away. Um, I think so. Well, to move it over, like we just, if you're moving it over, you'd minus it from both sides. Yeah, minus x from both sides. So here we will get zero, and then here we get zero too. Okay. Okay. Now let's further simplify it, and then we'll get ten equals to two plus four square root of x minus two, right? Right. Now let's move this two to the other side. So subtract from both sides too. So it will be 8 equals to 4 square root of x minus 2. OK. Now what will you, we do? Divide, do we divide by 4? Yes, exactly. Divide by so 4. So you on the left side? Yes. So, so two okay. 2. X minus two is under the square root. Okay. Yes. Now we what what we'll do? Square both sides. Exactly. Again, we square both sides. So yeah, see, I we have. This would be a little bit easier because you have a lot less numbers to work with. Yeah, but in this case, in such things, we just need to raise to the second power twice. You see, we raised here to the second power. And now we are raising here to the second power. So, x equals six. Yes, exactly. Cool. All right. It's just the uh, the uh, square root always gets a little bit intimidating, but I yeah. should be intimidated by it. Yeah, it's just like, well, not that hard. OK. Now, graph the following functions by finding if possible. So uh, do you want to do you want to graph each of them or just one of them? Um, we don't have a ton of time, so we can just do one. OK, which one do you want to graph? Let's just do the first one. OK. Let's see, minus 2x minus 3 squared x plus 1. OK. Now, here we have y equals to minus 2x minus 3 squared and then x plus 1, right? 
So let's find x and y intercepts. OK. So do you do we usually start with x? X and y intercepts? Uh, well, yeah. No, I'm, uh, never mind. Like, let's just. Keep yeah, you, yeah, you you can start with whatever you want, but like, uh, yeah. So let's see. So what are the so how to find x intercepts? Remind me. Um, you make the whole equation. Well, so you make y equal to zero. Exactly. So then we got negative two x minus three squared, and then x plus one, and then that all is equal to zero. Yes. Now. What will you do to find x's? You can divide both sides by minus 2, correct? Yeah, and that works. And that so, just leaves it with it's yes. still, uh, so it's x minus 3 squared times x plus 1, and it's still equal to 0. Exactly. So do you remember the thing like a times b equals to 0? And then it means that a equals to zero and b equals to zero. Remember this theorem? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So that would mean like x minus three equals zero and x plus one equals zero. Yep. And you have x minus three squared, but like you'll get it's the same of thing. both sides. Yeah, and it will be the same thing. Okay, and then x plus one equals to zero. And so x equals to three, and then x equals to minus one. Got so it. our so our points are um three zero and negative one zero. Yes. Now y intercepts. We need x equal to zero. And we'll get and plug it in here. I got negative 18. Yes. So our point is? Um, zero, negative 18. Exactly. OK. Now, do you do you know, do you remember like multiplicity thing? Uh, kind of. Yeah. Okay. So we found that we found the first root 3. So it was with multiplicity of what? Um, two, right? Because there was two times. Yes, because it's because it's squared. So you just look at the exponent. Because, yeah. And then, and then x equals minus one. What multiplicity is that? Just one, right? Yes, exactly. And uh, now. And is that same for y? Uh, yeah, for y, yeah, but but you don't have to do it for y. It's like oh. it's all it's always y one. And now uh, here's the thing: Do you know how to find end behavior? This is um, what you need to figure out too before yeah. graphing. I didn't really understand that. Okay, so to find the end behavior, you need x goes to infinity and find. If f if if x goes to infinity, then y goes to what? Okay, so let's try to figure this out. So we have this equation, and then mm, let's substitute instead of x infinity. So infinity minus three is basically infinity, correct? Right. Because yeah. Now here's the infinity plus one. It's infinity. Oh, and by the way, infinity minus three is infinity, and then infinity squared is also infinity, right? OK. And so we have infinity times infinity. It is just infinity. And then we have negative here. Negative 2 times infinity. It will make negative infinity. So why would go to negative infinity? 
and you need to do the same with with negative infinity if x goes to negative infinity then y goes to what i mean it would make sense that it would flip if x is to negative infinity then y is to infinity yeah so negative infinity here, here's negative infinity N then it's squared negative infinity times negative infinity it would be just infinity then here is negative infinity and then infinity times negative infinity it's negative infinity then here is negative sign so it would be just positive infinity got it okay so it flips yeah you can you can figure out and behavior like that and that's probably what they want you to do but there is a, a better way at least to me but i don't know if i whatever so you know that y equals x squared it's something like that right then y equals to minus x squared is something like that. Now, if y equals to x cube, uh, it is something like that. y equals to minus cube, x minus x cube will be something like that. So you see, when when there is a um, even exponent. So x to the fourth, x to the sixth. The end behavior from this side, it will go up, and from this side, it will go up. Okay. Or if there is a minus sign is in, sign in front, then it should be here goes down, and here goes down. If it's multiplicity, or if there is a power of three, five, seven, or one, whatever, no, three, five, seven, then the end behavior, it will be something here, and then it will be something here. And then if there is a minus sign, then it will be something here and something here. So okay. let's check in our case. This is the second power. So the, the biggest power here is x squared. And here's x. So this is actually the same as minus x cube, right? Because here's x squared times x cube. It will be x, x squared times x. It will be x cube. And then here's minus sign, so it will be like that. Oh, and by the way, let's uh, let's translate what we found here to the graph. So, if x is infin goes if infinitely uh, big, the y value goes infinitely small. So, it the end behavior is like that from this side. Now, if if x goes negatively smaller numbers, because the, here are negative ones, negatively smaller, then the y should be uh, positive. So the end behavior okay. is like that. Oh, let me check something. I always confuse this thing. I think that I confused these both graphs. Let me just check very quickly. Oh yeah, so this is the positive one and this is the negative one. Sorry, I always confuse them, whatever. Um, so so we, we see that here is negative x cubed, so it's the same as this one. You see the end behavior. So you could either figure, figure out it like, like this thing or you could just plug in positive infinity and negative infinity and then figure out what will y go to. Oh, OK, I see. OK, now, uh, can you give me just a second? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I should, sorry. Um, Okay, sorry. I just had no worries. To... Okay, so let's continue. 
uh, now, um, now let's find our our points, x-intercepts, on the graph. Okay. So we have three, one, two, three, three and zero, and then we have minus one and zero, right? And then we have y-intercept zero and minus eighteen. So it's somewhere over there. Zero and minus eighteen. Now, yeah. this multiplicity thing is very helpful. So when the multiplicity is even, and you can write down it, because, yeah, whatever. If, if the multiplicity is even number, meaning that it bounces x-axis. So it's either like that, is either like that bounces. But then if the multiplicity is odd, one, five, six, then it should go through the point. OK. So let's see what we have in our case. So we have this one is uh, 3 and 0. 3 is multiplicity of 2, meaning that it should bounce, right? And we see that end behavior here is, is going that way. So it bouncing of x-axis here. Now it's going, going, and then it's going, going through, because this one is, of course, multiplicity of 1. And then going back, and then we see here is the point of minus 1 and 0, multiplicity of 1, meaning that it's going through this point. And we see that end behavior is up, so it's just going up. And basically, this is our graph. OK, so it goes through one all the way up through, and then the other it hits and then goes back down? Yes. Interesting. Just like that, and then bouncing, and then goes and goes like that. And now, what is the domain? Hmm. X-axis, remember. So that should still be infinity and negative infinity, right? Yes, exactly. And so, what is our range? That actually is still going to be negative infinity to infinity, right? Because it yes. goes all the way up and it goes, but it goes back down. Yeah, this one goes here down and it goes infinitely large. So you're correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, for instance, the question for you for instance, if here was to the th three, um, so it should it should go through this point, and then it would, the graph will change. But whatever, I'll, I'm just telling that it will go through. And then if your end behavior, for instance, was like that, and then you have here is the point, and this point is with multiplicity of two, means that it's bouncing. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. And then, for instance, here's your y-intercept goes through the y-intercept. And then you have another point here, for instance, x-intercept, and it's with multiplicity of 5, for instance. Then it goes through. With multiplicity of 1, it goes through, and then your end behavior is here. And you first find end behaviors. OK, gotcha. Mm -hmm. OK. And I'll, I'll tell you something quick about the fractions. So for the fraction, this multiplicity thing doesn't work because when it's, when there is a fraction, it means that the graph um, should have pieces. Uh, so it will be something like that. And then there is there should be asymptotes. Oh, OK. Asymptotes. And then here's something. Like two separate, OK. And you can't really find the end behavior because it's like pieces, you don't really know. And so f f I'll, let's just, I feel like, let's just, f I'll ask you to find horizontal asymptotes and vertical asymptotes in in this last one. Here we have y equals to x squared minus 3x minus 10. And then we have x squared minus 9. So do you know how to find vertical asymptotes? Um, 
I, I mean, I remember doing that on homework and stuff. I can't remember off the top of my head how to do it. Yeah, yeah. So um, just remember that when there's something linear, like not linear, but like there is no fraction, it means that there is no asymptotes. But when there is a fraction, that means that there is asymptotes. You can find a vertical asymptote. And to okay. find a vertical asymptote, you need to equal denominator to zero. Okay. So in our case, it's x squared minus 9 equals to zero, x squared equals nine, and then x equals two plus or minus three. So your vertical asymptotes are minus three and three. Okay. So we, we can graph it, x equals to three, so one, two, three. Here's our first asymptote, vertical first asymptote, it goes like that, and then we have oh, minus three. Yes. Uh -huh. And then we have minus three, one, two, three, and then it goes vertically okay. through like that. Mm -hmm. Now, to find the horizontal asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, uh, you see, you look at the exponents of the first factor kind of thing, or not first, like the biggest, uh, the biggest exponent on the denominator and denominator, and then you, you see, if, if this one equals to this one, which is in our case, two equals two, meaning that um, yep. the horizontal asymptotes yep. equals two to the, um, like the numbers that, the number that is here divided by the numbers that is here. In our case, it's just one over one. So y equals one. So for instance, yeah. if you have so to have had, for instance, minus three x squared something yeah, something, and then here you have x squared. So what would you your horizontal asymptote be? Okay, so now this exponent equals to this exponent. Okay, so sum of products, which is one. Asking for the SOP. No, you uh, okay. you look at this number and then this number. So minus three divided by one equals to minus three. Okay, right. Okay. So I'll I'll actually write it in this form so you can maybe write down if you want. A in X power N something here and then here we have B X in power M. So if if N if N equals M then Y equals to so what is this truth? Um, a over B. It tells us what condition a over B. Be high or low, right? Okay, got it. Uh, awesome. Okay, so the first condition. Now, if N is less than M. A, B, C, and D so for instance, zero. if you would have had and X over X squared. So our first condition is going to be not A, not B. Not then not B. then uh, our horizontal asymptote is Y equals to zero. It's just all, always like that. And it's basically x axis, so it would just go like that here. <laughs> and now, if m n is bigger than m, then there is no horizontal asymptote. But there is an oblique asymptote. Oblique, and to find the oblique, you need to right, just use long five. division. So, for instance, you would have there like x5 minus 2. So we have x5 x squared and then x5. Oh, okay. Long division, yeah. So you need to multiply this something by this to. So it would be here x cube. So it would be x fifths and then you have minus 2. And this is the remainder. And so your y will equal to x cube okay and then minus minus two over x squared and then and then you but usually usually here's like through three and here's like two and so you'd get x and so you'd get x here and um and you need to disregard the remainder so your 
oblique asymptote is y, wait. Yeah, y equals to x. So this is your oblique asymptote and your graph will be something, um, okay. whatever, something like that. Okay. But, but usually this one is enough. Okay. At least in our case. So yeah, whatever. And in our case, by the way, y equal to one. So we draw here one, and then we would have something like that, like that, and then like that. We just need to find the x-intercepts, like always, and things like that, and y-intercepts, and Got then it. find additional points. Awesome. Now let's move on to the um, JHA number two. <laughs> Um, if you didn't have time for uh, this tonight, we could schedule another day. I, I know I still got to eat dinner and stuff. So. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, yeah, my husband just left and he said he, that he'll come back later. But you can you can eat. <laughs> you can eat. I I can just explain you something while we are eating. Oh, sure. That works. Okay, awesome. And let's find, find I'll find our group quiz. Yeah, I'll just wait to eat. That's fine. Uh, yeah, because, I mean, if you got the time, we can just do it tonight. Okay, whatever. <laughs> but you can eat. So let's see, group quiz. Okay, this is something you will need to submit, like write down and submit. So let's let's see do you have any questions from here uh oh. let me pull it up real quick mm -hmm. um we're on the second part do date two now mm -hmm. Missing the third to the last one. Yeah, the quiz submission's closed for me, so I guess I'll have to email the teacher about that. Um, no, you, you can just email uh, email it to me, like the, the just quiz. Take, yeah, just take the picture of the quiz we'll do tonight and email it to me because I'm grading that stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, Cool. So tell me if you have if you if you know how to solve these type of things. On the three and four preparation. Uh, extension problems. Three to the power x minus one equals to three to the power two x plus seven. Uh, no, I don't. I need okay. To, I do so we have three, three x minus one equals to three, two x plus seven. So you have to remember that whenever here's the same number and here's the same number, we can just ignore them. It would be just x minus one equals to two x plus seven. Okay, and now we are just solving the equation because it will make sense of this because 3 to some power equals to 3 to some power. So meaning that these powers should equal to each other. Okay, that makes sense. It's just mm -hmm. a weirder way to, yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's like a to the n equals to a to the m. You can just do it like that, n to the m, n equals to the m. Okay, and now let's solve it. Okay. So I guess we should get the x's on one side. Yes, exactly. Um, should we move them to the left side? Is that the easiest way? Yeah, let's do that. Then we have negative x minus one equals seven. 
Mm -hmm. oh. The one over. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now we just need to reduce it. So then negative x equals 8, so then x equals negative 8? Yes, exactly. So this is our answer. Oh, that's not too hard then. Okay. <laughs> I can do that. Yeah, okay, let's 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 try to figure out then the second one. So we have two x minus two equals to sixteen to the x power. Okay. So basically have you guys went over we want happening? here here be the same number like we have here, so we could yeah. equal these powers. So oh okay. Yeah, so 16 is the same as 2 in which power? Um, 2 to the second is 4, 4. Is it third? So 2 to the third is 8. Oh, it would be 2 to the fourth then, huh? 2 to the fourth, exactly. So we have 2 to the fourth, and then here's x, so it just 4x equals to 2, x minus 2. Looked at a K map at all yet? Uh, yeah. Okay, so then X minus 2 equals 4 times X. Yes, exactly. Um, so, okay, so can you wait and view your. Yeah, paint would work. Okay. Paint on the left side. Uh, so and what do you get? X equals two. So it would be two divided by negative three. Yes. It's the same as negative two divided by three. Okay. So this is our answer. Okay. Now let's do the next one then. Okay. So. We have four inputs, A, B, C, and D. So we need to have uh, so the right side okay. box. So we have ln x uh, minus 2 left, equals to ln 3x plus 11. So this is kind of similar to what we did there. If there is, if there is the logarithm of base A, of whatever uh, equals to logarithm so of base a the if, the and there here's whatever if this is if the base is the same then x equals to y so ln is the same as logarithm of base e logarithm okay. of base e that's why the uh, the bases are the same, that means that we can just ignore the logarithm and stuff. It just would be x minus 2 equals to 3x plus 11, whatever are in this parenthesis. Okay. And now we calculate it would be minus 2x equals to. Okay. So now across 18. the top, above the, above the first box, right, 0, 0. Okay. Well, I think we'll link. Oh, we got to make them really small so that they're like the size of the box. So just the first, the first column, I mean, needs to have a zero zero above it. So. Now this column represents every time that A and B are on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got the same answer. I had it in decimals though, so it's, I got negative six point five. Okay. Let me see. Thirteen. Just check thirteen. Oh yeah, negative six point five. Okay. So here's the question for you, just for our preparation for our quiz. Can you change this thing to the logarithm? Logarithm. So logarithm of something equals to x, or like, can you find x from from this equation? If no, I can just show you. Keep in mind that that is for the top row. That zero zero represents the top row. Yeah, that'd probably be best. Okay, so logarithm 
base A of B. So we see that this form, basically we are trying to find what if, what is this number, I mean, this number traced to some power equals to this number. So we are trying to find the power that we are raising this number to make it equal to this number. Okay. And so, for instance, if we have logarithm, no, let's do two of x, two of x equals to three, then x x equals to what? Here's the question for you. So now across the top of our tree, our car Give me a decimal, right? We have to. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it should be a logarithm. Oh, okay. Logarithm of base of, of what base? Of three? Here's a. Here's a. Here's a. Um, so, so it would be logarithm okay, so now if we're log two. What is after zero? And then uh, is that times three or just three? It's just three. Log two. Okay. So, oh, okay. So two is base and three is like off. Logarithm base of two. I see. Of three kind of thing. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Let's do this one. F of four of x equals to five. What is the x? What x equal to? X would be equal to log four, four of five. Exactly. Awesome. Now, okay. here find logarithm four sixteen. What it will be. Now we are transferring this form to actually this one to figure out what what it equals to because we are trying to find uh, for to which power equals 16 so it would be 4 to the x equals to 16 yeah that's what I got and now and now we are trying to make here and here the same number so it would be 4 to the x equals to 4 squared because 16 is 4 squared and then you see here's 4 here's 4 we can just disregard them and x equals to 2 so this logarithm 4 of 16 equals to 2 interesting okay that's not too hard yeah and it makes sense because 4 to the second power is 16 right so okay. Here's the question for you then. Log three of nine, what does it equal to? So we have to raise this number to some power to get nine. Log three of nine, so that would be three x equals nine, which is, so three x equals three squared? Yes, exactly. And so so equals two. Yes, so log three of nine is two. And it makes sense. Three to the second power is nine because three times three is nine. Okay. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Now, now let's find this thing. The next one. Okay. So log three over two, and then two x plus one equals log three over two x squared plus one. Okay. So what is that? What do we do? Okay. Sorry, I'm gonna look at my last page real quick. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I guess that means you'd get like 3 over 2x equals... Oh, here, don't forget about what I said when logarithm of, of the same base is here, logarithm of the same base, means that we just 
disregard these things. Oh, okay. So then it would be two so x like plus, plus one, one equals x squared plus one. Yeah. When you see logarithm from both sides, you're you're instantly looking. Is it the same base? And then if it is, then you just disregard them and you're trying to equal these things. Mm -hmm. And so and then then we move this to, to all of this to one side and then find the um, roots by quadratic formula. Correct. Yep. Yes. Yeah, now it's easy. Now, let's see. Graph the following functions by identifying all the transformations. Okay, let's graph the first one then. Okay. So Here, y equals to negative 3, 4x minus 2, the one we did before that. plus 1. Um, yeah, so what numbers are we looking at? So, let me just get the formula for you. So, because it's in the, so, it's in the first column, right? Here's the standard formula for this kind of equations. A, B, X, X uh, minus H, and then plus K. <laughs> so if this number is uh, more than one, so if B more than one, then okay. it's, it's growth. So usually uh, y equals e to the x, the it looks spot? something yeah. like, something like, um, okay, and let's keep going, we can go to anywhere. Here's, here's zero, here is one, goes through this point. So zero, one, zero, one, yep. And then oh, this is weird. I, I remember something like that, but I can't figure out what's here. <laughs> Whatever. Let's just look up. Y equals to e to the x. Oh, okay, so this is the opposite way. Oh yeah. Okay. Makes sense why I was confused. So it's it's actually like that. It approaches x-axis but never never crosses it. Okay, so this is the so if if this number is more than one, e is actually approximately approximately something two point thirty seven if I remember correct. So it's more than one. That's why it's growing. Okay. Now, if here was the number like between um, zero and one, then it means a decay. Growth decay. Okay. And now let's let's go to just here. Graph. Online. Just to make sure that we at least got the right amount. So let's see here. Look down at our truth table and count six zeros under x. Y equals to, for instance, one over two okay. to the power. Okay. So that so we probably did it right. Of x. One over two to the power of x. Is when we turn off, grab like a. Oh, you see? Now it's a decay. Okay. So the graph would look like that. Because you always look at it from the left thing. So this is like you're standing here, you're going up to the mountain, and then you're actually st standing here, and you're going down. Okay, now. Um, Now let's see. K means um, moves graph up or down. So here, 
moves, moves graph up or down. So here's, for instance, plus one, meaning it goes up by one. So it goes from here like that. Or here it goes up by one. It's going like that. OK? OK, cool. K is up or down. So, oh, it's now, up because it's a positive one. Mm -hmm, yeah. Now, H represents moves left or right, left or right. So, for instance, if here was if here's two, then one, two, so it moves by two to the right. Something like that. Because this one is positive. If here was x plus two, it's negative, so it you moves back two. Something like that. Okay, now A means just stretching or shrinking. It means that it goes like that or it goes like that. Whatever. Let's just graph our graph. Oh, a negative, negative sign means it flips. It flips the graph over x-axis. So you have, normally we have like that. But now it's flipping, so it's like that. OK? And let's check that. Here, for instance, if here is minus. Yep, you see? It flips over x-axis. OK, so. Well, okay, let's graph like it normally is. Here's okay. zero point, so and here's one. So normally it goes like that. Yeah. Now we see here's plus one. What does it mean? Uh, move it up one. Yeah, so here our new point is zero point two. Okay, so A and B are gone. Now we see here's minus two meaning that it moves left or right. But this one is positive, so it, so it moves. It moves to the right by two. Right, right two? OK, that's what I got, yeah. Yeah. So did you, did you graph already? I'm working on it, yeah. Um, so far, this is what I got. Wait, so is kind of what you got. Wait, where are you but then in the oh, awesome. And then yeah. the negative sign flips it? Yeah, negative sign, we would flip it. So, yeah, let's move it to the right by two. So every point becomes uh, zero, becomes two and two. So here's our new point, and it goes through kind of through this point. So it would be like if this one was our axis already. Right. So it would be something like like that. Oh, and plus, and plus, we moved it up by two, meaning that our our horizontal asymptote moved by minus two from from x-axis. It moves actually by two here. So y equals to two. So it's actually yeah. like that. And now flip it. Now let's flip it so it would be like that. Actually, I think that it would be better to flip from the very first time so we could see like actual points here. Let's actually do that. So it would be like so that. Minute, then we move up by we up by one. So it would be here. And okay. our asymptote also moved by by one. So our new asymptote is here. Zero plus okay. one is just one. So it is something like like that. Now uh, then let's move it to the right by two. So it will be. 2.2 our new point, so it's here. Okay. And our new asymptote, like x axis is here and y axis is here. So it is like 
like that. In the top right corner. And the last thing is three thing. Um, three, meaning that. Just remember this shrinking, stretching. Whatever, we can just look up here. Minus, let's do three. Okay, let's do 0 0.5. Okay, so we have. Okay, so. So when this number is more than, when A is more than one, it means that. Um, the graph goes steeper so it would be something like that in this case in case it would be something like that and then if a is between zero and one then it would be like more relaxed kind of thing so we have more than one I mean it goes steeper Okay. okay. And we can find this point or something like that to figure out where exactly this point and how steep it is. But I don't think it really matters. And let's find the keys for that to see if you're if you correct. And yeah, something like that. So it's like so super steep. Right. Yeah, that's what mine kind of looks like. And now, let's find domain and and range. Domain is. So let's just make it a little bit clearer. So domain would be negative infinity to infinity, right? Oh, domain negative. Yes, yes. And then range. So those are the two terms that that entire Y kind of seems to taper off on the positive. Is that correct? Because we, if we two so terms, we range is representing Y axis. So it is. So it, it is approaching Y equals 1. It, it is approaching 1 here. It never crosses this point because our mm -hmm. asymptote moved so when we moved on. here by one. That's, okay. So that's awesome. What does so that the, mean for the range? Range. So, so our range is from one till uh, negative infinity. Yep. Yes, exactly. And we have here. Oh yeah, you you would just say negative oh. infinity till one. Yeah, correct. <laughs> and the man is all real numbers. And then yeah, it just takes. They wanted us to find. It's you can put it there. It's probably going to give you the exact same thing. Just the point. Y intercept, I guess yeah. they wanted us to find. So to find by intercept, we would just um, equal x to the 0, right? So it would be minus 3, 4 in power, 0, minus 2, no, just the way it was programmed. plus 1, and then minus 3, 4 in power, minus 2, plus 1, right? And we have minus 3, then we have 1 over 4 squared. Right? Okay, yeah. Because this is the same as this one. And then plus one. And then we have minus three times one over four times four sixteen plus one. N A U G H. You see sixteen divided by three. Can you simplify that? No. Yeah, let's just then add one to that. So we have 
16 minus 3 over 16. 16 minus 3 is 13 sixteenths. So this is our y-intercept. So, so when it was crossing like that or something like that, so this is our and uh, x is zero, so this is our point. So it's actually crossing here. Yeah. So let's. Can you draw me another one really quick? Somewhere right here. Just, we'll just okay. One Got on. it. Just okay. draw the box really quick. No. Uh, let's see. Logarithm is like it's almost this, it's the same, but you have to remember that um, the parent fun, the centered. Anyways, the graph of logarithm usually is something like that. So logarithm is usually like that. And oh wait, exponent function is like that. And then logarithm is something like that. OK? So okay. if you need to flip now, it, it would be something one, like that. And move it to the right. One, the um, left, these numbers right. represent like like the same kind of stuff. This one is. This one is K. I don't remember what you were writing down. Right this one is it. H, if I'm correct. This is A. Okay, right. now now let's let's just do the quiz okay. then. Now technically all four of those So the first question is what is the logarithm? So you would circle all four of those. What is the logarithm? Yeah. And I'll give you a hint. Remember how logarithm of four sixteenth. So you, you have to explain like Yep, that is that is one circle. That counts as logarithm. this kind of thing. So what does logarithm mean? Well um, the way you want to do it is you actually just kind of And this one called positive. Bates. You gotta make sure you're not circling yeah. those middle four. Oh, no, yeah, so just kind of the way I do it is like I would circle so the logarithm is the base numbers or the logarithm of the base numbers is the exponent yeah something like that just something to tell you what yeah so logarithm is base Whatever raised to some power uh should equal to so, that's one circle. So this number. Write, let me let me think. Uh, let me think how we can write it down. And you you can also think how we can write this down. So mm -hmm. like log a of b equals a to the x. Um, equals b. Mm -hmm. Equals b. Yeah, so what is the logarithm like? OK, now let's make one more quick Carnot map, and I'll give you one more example. Um, it's like hard to figure out how to say that exactly. <laughs> yeah, so let's see. So we have logarithm of base A of B. And we know that we need to raise the base to get that number, the B number. We need to raise the base to some power to get the number, right? Yeah, yeah. So we can say logarithm is a number, is a like a quantity or a number um, to which we are raising the base, or like. To which, like a fixed number or the base, to get the or like to produce a the number we are getting. It's the number that we're raising the base with that produces the final product or final yeah, answer. the final answer. Yeah, the final number. Those do not touch in any way. So those are two circles. Okay, very good. Okay. Okay. Now let's. Can you read the second question then? 
Logarithms and exponential functions are inverse functions. What does that mean? So do you know, like, something about inverse functions? Yeah. I was just writing down the question so I can Yeah, yeah, write, write down. Mm -hmm. The two you just circled should be under in one circle. And then you have to use a total. So an inverse function is like kind of the opposite or like if you flipped a regular function, right? Yes. Uh, it's like when we're trying to find the inverse function of a function, it means that we are undoing all of these steps that were given to that function. So the, the inverse function un is an undo of the regular function. Kind of. Wait, is it cancel it out? Is that what you, how you could say it? Mm. Or no, it just reverses the process? No, it just reverses the process. Yes, it, it, it doesn't okay. cancel out. So a logarithm reverses the process of an exponential function? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like the, ver the very first example we did, the corners, they don't look to me and you like they touch each other, but in a Carnot map, they touch each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, let's do the third one then. Find the inverse of f of x. They're in the corners. Yeah, the corners okay. touch each other. So I'll give you a hint. To find the inverse, um, you have to switch x and y, the places of x and y. So instead of x, you would put y. Instead of y, you would put x. And then solve it for y kind of thing. So. Okay, so then I turn the x's into, so like, because the f of x is, is the y, that's the stand-in for y, right? Yeah, it's, it's y, you just read it as y. y would equal 3, 2, 2x two plus 4, and then all of that plus 3. So then x would equal that more. 3 to the 2y plus 4 plus 3. Yes, exactly. Okay, so then you solve for y. For y. Mm -hmm. Do you like set x to zero or? Um, yeah, so it's really no, no, you don't set anything. You just need to like worry about the right hand side. Yeah, yeah. Y equals to something. Okay. So you could logarithm bo both sides, like. Let me see. Let's do the second. Let's do the second plus two to the third. Yeah, that's. Let's see what this. Okay. So here's the rules the, the rule for you just to to kind of know logarithm of a plus b is yeah, I feel like this must logarithm be of the same exact thing. Wait, I I think that I'm forgetting everything already. Yeah. Hmm, whatever. Yeah. So do you have any ideas of how to solve this? Yeah. 
I think there's more questions. So don't submit yet. Scroll down. Don't, don't submit yet. Okay. Now you think your computer there's more questions. So go back to that. I think so. So, like if I wanted to turn, I'm kind of confused actually. Yeah. So you would want to bring this three to the other side. So it subtracts three from both sides. So it would be x minus three equals to three to y plus four. Okay. okay. Now we want to logarithm both sides. But we want a base of three because when it's like logarithm, three of three squared. What does it equal to? Logarithm of three of three squared. What is it equal to? That would be um, three. No, I think you want to go back one. How does the margin? Three squared is so B would be nine. Oh, so it'd be three squared equals nine. So, so logarithm three of base three of three right the of well, okay let's do like that logarithm three of nine okay so what will you have x equals two yes exactly and this is the same as this one three to the so we have three to raise to some power equal to three squared and we see that this power should equal to this power, so it's just two, okay? And so that's why we're we're taking logarithm of base three here from both sides, logarithm of base three and then of this whole thing, because we will know that we could just get rid of this thing and we will be left with this one, like here. This power should equal to this one this power should equal to this one. So that's why I just it will be just this one. And we are taking logarithm th of three from both sides. So use the click on the K map here. And what will we get then? So then the threes cancel out. Yeah, except of this thing, because here's no three or anything, just it's the same like that. Okay, so then it's log three of x minus three equals two y plus four. Yes, exactly. Okay. And now we just need to solve for y. Okay. So now you go up and you click on loop color. Okay, so, so the four over? Yes, subtract so four from both sides. Now you click on then 2y equals log 3 of x minus 3 and then minus 4. Yep, we're doing exactly what we've already done. Okay, and then divide everything by 2. Yes. So y equals 2. Now that's everything that belongs to that loop. So now go up and get another loop color. Okay, and now click on all four corners. And this is our inverse function. We found it there we go. right here. So that's it. Okay. We divided both sides by two. One f minus one. We only have two so equals log three of x minus three minus four over two. Okay. Every, everything over two, correct? Everything over two. Yeah, that's what I got. Okay. Awesome. Okay. That's one so then. One, Oops. One more. Uh, what is the question now? Solve each equation. Okay. Find exact solutions.
Okay. So the first one is log base four of log base three of log base two of x. Uh, and then it's all equal to zero. Jeez. Uh, although uh, this, I mean, it's kind of like when you have f and g and h with a function. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, you could you could either do that or you could change this thing to logarithm base four of something. So you could get rid of this and this. You see what I mean? Okay. And so here's here's the question for you. Logarithm four of something equals to zero. Meaning what this should be Okay. What this number should be to make this whole thing equal to zero? Well, I would think that it would be a zero. So now on the left, as zeros make zero equal. So then it would be four x equals to zero, and then if okay. you, and if you raise anything t zero to any power, it would be zero. So this one is not correct. Oh, okay. You have to raise this you power. The and this is and this is actually your power. Huh. Anyway, so here should be four to the zero power. Right. So we have four x equals to four to the zero power, and then we have x equals to zero. That's why this whole thing okay. goes to zero. Do you get that? Oh, okay. And then four to the and zero power. Zero. Four to the zero power is what? Anything to the zero power is what? Zero. Oh no, it's one. Yes, exactly. It's one. So this is like that. Okay. Now you see this one is the same base and this one is the same base. So we just cross this out. And then we get logarithm. Everything that is inside doesn't go away anywhere. Walk so to need, of x equals to one. Everything that is inside. Here's one. Okay. Here's this thing. Okay. Now we have to change change this one to logarithm base three. So we could cross this out. Okay. So what is the number here? So we have three. Um, so what is what is this number should be? Um, that's equal to one. One equals logarithm base three of what number? Open it again. Start over. You can look at this one. So we wanted to change this number to logarithm 4 of, and we found that 4 to the 0 power. Right. Is it 3 to the 0 power, though? I don't know why they are done that way. It works. No. no. Oh, zero. Oh, because so it's, oh, so it would be like log 3 of 1. Three of three to the one. Three to the one, yeah. Because three to the x equals two. Three to the one. X equals one. So that's why this thing gives us one. Okay, so x equals one. Here's the question for you. If, for instance, it would be 2, we want to change it to log 
base 3. Yeah, perfect. What would be the number here? Um, then it would be 2 squared, right? Would be 3 squared. 3 squared. Yes, because what is the logarithm? Is 3 raised to some power should equal to 3. Uh, so x should equal to 2. Right, right. So this one is 2. So this number raised to, to some number. So essentially, this one always stays the same. And then you raise it to this power to make to make it equal to this thing. OK. <laughs> so what if you have 3 and you want to change it to logarithm base 3? What would it be? Um. Three to the third. Exactly. Now you have four. You want to change it to log base two. What will you get here? Um, then you'd get. Four. Or, um, we need to. Okay, so what goes? Which two went? Which two? No, it'd be two to the fourth. Yeah. So here, just see. You're just rewriting this number every time. Okay. All right. And then you raise it to the number that's opposite. Yeah. Okay. Let's try the very last one. You have nine, and you want to make it log. Okay. Base of five. And then what will it be? So just take like a put an OR gate somewhere. Exactly. So that's going to be five to the ninth. Exactly. Because it's five x equals to five to the ninth, and x equals to nine. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I hope you figured. Yep. Okay, so we have we've got this one, and then we have we have here log three of three to the first is just three, right? Okay. Now what do we do? What do we do? Uh, wait, are we still in the same equation? Yeah, yeah. I I was just yeah. Now we're continuing our equation. This one I was just showing you to how to figure out oh, okay. this stuff. Yeah, so we have we have log three base three equals to this log three of three. So that'd be three to the third, right? What's on each side of the So what do we do now? What do we cross what do we cross out? we have the same base here and the same base. Here. Yes, we just remove it. And so what are we left with? Uh, log 2 of x. Exactly, log 2 of x equals 2. Which we created with the end. Equals to what? So, um, so that would be... Um, sorry, I'm trying to... So then that would be... Um, and that's it. So now, slide so logic over, well, over, well of it's all right. Yeah. But if you were to go through and test all 16 of the Do you see my screen, by the way? You had in the, yes. Know, OK, good. Table, this light would represent x and would turn on and off. Uh, this is good. It would match so log 2 of x equals log, to what? Log 3 of, OK. Why is this confusing? We just crossed out log three, and okay. we are left with three. Yeah. Okay. Remember, like we. Oh, we are left with three. Okay, that's yeah. why I was confused. Yes. Yeah, so, this you can take it this in parentheses and, and think okay parentheses stay. So everything that is in parentheses uh, stays. We wouldn't know. Okay. This is what we are left with. So then we get. Now we need to change this to log base two. 
to then get rid of the base of these things, right? And then what will the number be here? Will be here. Without us writing it down and reduce it, we don't know. Well, just X, right? We are changing three to log base of two. Oh, okay. So it's log two of three. Yes, two to the third power. Oh, yeah. So we have log two of x to equals to log be a lot simpler than you think it's going to two of two to the third power. Now what we're doing? Finding x, right? Yeah, but like yeah. The top one that says SSI. We're, we're seeing, okay, look from this side, look from this side. Yep. Hmm, are the bases the same? Yes, base is the same, so? Uh, the 2x equals 2, is equal to 2 to the third. But th this 2 is just base. We cross out log and the base, so it would be x equals. Oh, just x. Mm -hmm, yeah. Equals 2 to the third. Yes, exactly. And so x equal to? X is equal to two. Two to the third, and two to eight. the third is eight. Okay. Wow, that's that is a complicated one. Yeah. Uh, just remember that you always need to change it to the same base log of four, like we did here, because here was log of four to get rid of it eventually. And then to change it, it's super easy. You just move this number over here, and then see what is was the number here. And you raise it to this the same power, and then and then you cross it out from both sides, and you are left what is inside of the parentheses. Right. For, okay. for the zeros one. So, and then we kind of like zero, it's like a cabbage. We we took out so this thing. Now we are changing. Then we got some some number, for instance three. Then we change yeah, it again become, oh, sorry. to log gonna, of base of the same base that is in the left yeah. side. Then we take it out, then we are left what is the inside of this thing. And then we've got like x equals to the third, like, okay? So we are going from from out and kind of getting it inside of the cabbage. Yeah, sorry, that was, that was hard. Yeah. Um, if you want, you can, you can like try to think about that a little more. Okay. Later. <laughs> okay. Now, what's what's the next what's the next question? Let's do the next one. Um, it's uh four to x minus two is all equal to eight. Okay. So, wouldn't this just be that? x is equal to 4, because then 4 squared equals 8. Wait, no, 4 squared is equal to 16. Oh, OK, so it is. OK. So basically, you need to find the same numbers, the same number to some power equals to the same number to some power, right? Oh, that's right. That's right. So like, so you see, what what is the same number you could change four and eight kind of thing. Now we should be able to save it. Try to save it. So like eight is the same as two to the third. Exactly. And then four is the same as two to the second power, right? Right. So try to rewrite all of the... So then two... <laughs> two squared... Two... X minus two is equal to two to the third. Yes. So did you test it again? And they were all passed? Okay. Okay, now what do you do? You've got the same, the same num number raised to something from both sides. Yeah, I got the same base number on each side, but different mm -hmm. exponents. Yeah. So what would you do next? So.
so then last paragraph I can have like um, X minus two times two equals three yes exactly you just equal the powers because the number is the same so go to that next page from both sides so as well okay to the uh, your test page that showed you and now you have just linear equation and you want to try so two parentheses test. x minus two yes copy equals that. three exactly and now you're trying okay. to find the x put that in the comments box so then 2x minus 4 equals 3. Mm -hmm. So then plus 4 plus 4. 2x equals 7. x equals 7 over 2. Yes, exactly. There you go. Okay, and that's... That's the answer. Okay. That makes sense. All right, so let me try this as a second one then. Yeah. So the second one, you can't really make from both sides the, the same number because right. we have four, it's two to the second, and nine is three to the second. So it doesn't really work. So when such thing happen, you should logarithm both, both sides. Okay. And then you would want to logarithm it base of four because you have four to the x minus two to get rid of this like um, logarithm at least from one side. This, this last weekend I had two tests and I was just busy, but I should okay. have more time. To okay, just try to logarithm both sides with a base of four. four. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, when do, when do we have another one scheduled? Thursday? Okay. Okay, no, that's fine. I can be there for then. We'll see. We'll see after Thursday if we need more. Time. Okay. Sounds good. So when you logarithm aside, so like. Oh, you did. Okay. There is. Oh, I don't. Oh yeah, you did. It looks like. Um, I had you for two hours. Yeah. Okay, so then one side would be. Yeah, I'm here for another hour, so we can keep going. Uh, log. I was four. To um, three. What I've seen is that. Well, that doesn't make sense. Okay, so from from the left side you have logarithm of base four. Oh, four x minus two, correct? Uh, uh, four uh, to the power x minus two. Yeah. Now, now, what do you think it will equal to, like, the left side? So we got to break down 9 into an exponent. No, 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 you, you don't have to break down 9. Oh, okay. Yeah, just just forget. You, you just need to find x, and it doesn't matter if, uh, if there will be a logarithm or something. You just need to find x. So you would need to focus more on the left side. Okay. So log four of four x minus four to x minus two. Mm -hmm. So what would it equal to? It's like the same as four logarithm of base four four to the second okay. power. So this lab, what would it equal to? You know. And or and not, but we're gonna use logic TTL part. Okay. So I'll just let's go into logic system and I'll explain this to you. So then it would be 4x equals 4x minus 2? Mm, yeah. But, yeah, and then x equals 2x minus 2. Like, x is representing the, the number you're trying to find. All righty. So and then x equals x minus 2. x minus 2. So your answer is x minus 2. Okay. Oh, and that's as much as we can get? Yes, exactly. But we have to find oh, x. Because if you try and move x over, then it gets canceled out. Mm, yeah. And so... 
And so what is your x? It's x minus 2. Yeah, and what x equal to? Okay, so now let's, let's exit out of there by clicking. Like, what is your solution? You're trying to find x from this whole equation. Oh, and that's also x minus 2? So x. So, so, so we, so here, we found, we, no, that's fine. I'm just trying to uh, understand how to explain. So you found the left, the left side of the function, log of base four, of four raised to the x minus two power. Okay. We found out that this whole thing equals to x minus two. And we still have from the other side, log base four of nine, so we have x minus okay. 2 so equals to log of 4 of base 4 of 9. OK. And now we're trying to find x. So 7404, if you double click on it. Oh, so then 4 of x equals 4 of 9. So let's, let's x go back to the main. Double click hmm. on main. Wait, on base. Here. So we have log four of four x minus two right. equals to log four of nine. Now we see log of four. If you if we see log of four four to the second. This whole thing equals to 2 because 4 to the x equals to 4 squared and then x equals to 2. Now, if you have log 3, 3 squared is equal to 2. Log 4, 4 to the third is equal to 3. So you see the pattern? That when here's the same numbers, this whole thing will equal to this exponent. Because 4 to the x equals to 4 to the 3, x equals 3. Okay. Now we have here and here the same power. So this whole thing will equal to the exponent, x minus 2. Okay. Just drag one of those out there, kind of above the anywhere. Okay. So what would it be this one? This one equal to? This logarithm equal to base of 5, of 5 to the 6th. Yes, and you'll just memorize that it's that top right. So there's only one. It'd be equal to 9. Or sorry, it'd be equal to 6, right? Yes, because this one is the same as this, this one, so mm -hmm. this whole thing equals to this exponent. Okay, here's the other. But if it's different, if it's a, instead of a 5 and a 5, a 4 and a 9. 4 um, and a 9. Then you you just plug it in in the calculator. You, you can oh, okay. find it. Or, for instance, sometimes you can find it. For instance, here's 1 third, 1 third, and here's 3. This is complicated. So we have log 3 of power minus 1 to 3. So your answer will be exponent of this one divided by exponent of this one. Here's the one. We just don't write it usually. 1 over minus 1. So it will equal to minus 1. Okay. Now I'll give you this one. Let's do 1 fourth, 1 fourth. And here's two. Okay, what it equals to. So we, um, we, we first make it the same the same kind of thing here, right? So what would be one fourth is two to the what power? Two negative. Sorry, I'm like super lost now. Yeah. So now we just have to uh, that's pretty bad. That we, so let's yeah, I think that these are harder stuff. So I think that you really need to just remember that 
just remember that when here's the same number and here's the same number, this whole thing will equal to the exponent. Just remember yeah. that for now. Just, okay. just forget about anything else. So you're not getting no. confused more and more information, you know. And now, you know, we figured that out that, that this is the same number, this is the number, so the whole thing here equals to this exponent, correct? Okay. Now we have to we have to still find x, so we add two from both sides, so right? The seventy-four. Let's make let's make our knots first, okay? Okay. So then x equals log base four of nine plus two. Yes, and this is our answer. Oh. And then, yeah, we just plug in this in calculator, find out how much this and this, but you didn't really have to do that. This is your answer. Okay. Okay, yeah. I see. Yeah, I got confused with the... Yeah, so the, what I would recommend you to do is to uh, read the material, oh, sorry, read the materials that are in the, in the course for logarithm stuff, and yes. maybe like go over it and then you'll you'll remember like what I was I was telling you and you were like oh okay like yeah, it will yeah. make sense to you okay I'll go back over it yeah awesome then take a picture of this quiz and send it to me okay okay I'll do that right now um we're good for today then yes yes all right awesome. okay thank you so much yeah you're welcome yeah and y if you like have struggles or something you can you can just call me and we can go over something Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. Good good night. Bye. Good night.